Ladies and gentlemen in the Shred Gaming Citycom video, we have a bit of an update for the NVIDIA fiasco. Now, this update comes with a direct quote from the CEO of NVIDIA. I hope that I'm going to pronounce his name correctly. It's Jen Song Huang. Now, I'll warn you, some people are not very happy about this uh, explanation, but I'll go for it anyway. Hey everyone, some of you are disappointed that we didn't clearly describe the segmented memory of the GeForce GTX 970 when we launched it. I can see why, so let me address it. We invented a new memory architecture in Maxwell. This capacity was created so we could that reduced configurations Maxwell can have a larger frame buffer so that the GTX 970 is not limited to 3 gigabytes of RAM and it can have an additional 1 gig. The GTX 970 is 4GB card, um, but the upper 512 megabytes of the additional 1GB is segmented and has reduced bandwidth. This is a good design because we were able to aid the additional 1GB, uh, uh, sorry, add in the additional 1GB for the GTX 970 and our software engineers can keep less frequently used data in the 512MB segment. Unfortunately, we failed to communicate this internally to our marketing team and externally to reviewers at launch. Now, I'm going to skip some paragraphs, and he then said, Instead of being excited that we invented a way to increase the memory from the GTX 970 3 to 4 gigs, some were just disappointed we didn't describe the segmented nature of the architecture for the last 1 gigabyte. This is understandable, but let me be clear, our only attention was to create the best GPU for you. We want the GTX 970 to have 4 gigs, as games are more memory intensive than ever. Uh, the 4 gigabytes memory of the GTX 970 is used and useful, to achieve that performance you are enjoying and as ever our engineers will contribute to enhanced games performance that you can regularly download using the GeForce experience. He ends by saying we won't let this happen again we'll do a better job next time. So apart from the editor of the video i.e. me crying as I add in all of those quotes what do I think of this? Well Let's more talk about users themselves. I've read over some users, you know, the discussions and comments on various websites, for example, forums and so on, and people aren't really that happy about the explanation, at least that I'm seeing. In fact, people are pretty furious. One of the reasons is, and to quote one user, they said that he's seeming rather insincere, and additionally, the apology is pretty late. Now, to be totally honest, from a technical standpoint, I don't really think 3 gigabytes for the GTX 970 is acceptable. Um, you know, even to say we, we wanted a way to increase the memory of the GTX 970, that, okay, I, I understand it's the way that they, you know, engineered the card, and I'm not going into technical details for this video, because frankly, I think it's kind of outside the remit, but it's like, look, 4 gigs now has been a thing from AMD since the last generation of uh, GPUs. And back in the days of Kepler, NVIDIA got quite a few negative comments saying, well, why is your card 3 gigs? You know, we want the extra RAM. And, you know, finally we got it with Maxwell. Finally we got the 4 gigs, but now we've got limited memory, uh, limited bandwidth on certain segments of RAM and so on. It's, to be totally blunt, it's messy. And it's not really just the communication problems, but when you say stuff like we wanted to find a way to increase the memory uh, of the card, it, it doesn't resonate well with users when your rivals have been doing it as well. And I'm not saying that I, I dislike NVIDIA. I, as a company, I think they've done a hell of a lot for GPUs. I really do. Uh, if you trace back the history of graphics cards, AMD, or back in the day, ATI, you had 3D Effects, you had NVIDIA, and a couple of others who have since bailed out of the GPU race for the most part, like Matrox, who now really specialize in, like, you know, CAD workstations and so on. But all of these guys, and of course, NVIDIA did gobble up 3D Effects, which I still kind of lament, despite the fact that 3D Effects did make some rather large boo boos. But 3D Effects were really the ones who pioneered 3D graphics, and so a lot of the people who were working um, on 3 dfx and of course that's why NVIDIA now have SLI technology because it was originally created by 3 dfx and so on and so forth. My point being, 
I'm getting a little bit out of uh, off topic here. The you know as a company they've done a lot of good stuff, and so I you know I bear that in mind. But this is one of those this is one of those times where the company have really screwed up, and it's not even the press that are spreading the negative message here. That's the thing. This isn't like you know. This is nothing to do with the press. This is the users themselves who are furious at NVIDIA for what they've done. Um, it's not even, I, to be totally honest, I don't actually think it's the fact that NVIDIA have necessarily had the miscommunication solely. I think it's also that it took them so long to respond on it. And even this message, it took so bloody long for them to comment on it. It's... You know, right now the, the the train has well left the station. This is kind of the point where people, a long time ago, like when people found out about this, the, the Nvidia should have just jumped on damage control. They should have immediately just jumped on damage control and say, "Oh my God, we're really sorry about this. We we screwed up. This is a massive miscommunication. It's completely." And to be totally honest, I I don't understand how. No one in the technical team communicated well enough with the marketing department, especially after the reviews went out. Like, I can understand it before the reviews went out, maybe. But after the reviews come out, you're going to Google your own product. You're going to do it. You are. I would. If I was an engineer and I was working on a card and that sucker came out and people were buying it or, you know, even just for the sake of ego or just wondering how the hell people weren't finding the card, like, are the results the same, you know, up, do people have any concerns that maybe we can improve or address in driver updates and so on and so forth, you're going to Google it. My point being that there were going to be engineers who read it and actually realized that people were misinterpreting this stuff. They were reading it, especially because of how GPU was reading the number of ROPs and so on. And that's another thing. He's not addressing the, the ROPs. He's not addressing the level 2 cache or any of that stuff. But let's just for the moment, for the sake of this video, focus on the 4 gigs because that's what the quote's on. The fact of the matter is, he would have, they would have known this stuff. And, you know, they didn't come out, they didn't say anything, and they should have. They should have said, look, we're really sorry, there was a really big miscommunication, here's the thing. Because the fact of the matter is, people now are going to know this stuff. There are so many people on the internet, so many technically informed people, so many users, so many benchmarking websites, so many who are able to create drivers and rip down architecture and so on and so forth. Eventually, this stuff is going to leak, particularly because this is a PC. This isn't like the PS4 or the Xbox One where we don't have access to certain parts of the SDKs and stuff. We can access most of the stuff. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic, but... My point being, my final kind of like, this is really what it should have happened. They should, as soon as the reviews went out, and as soon as they realised this internally, and they must have realised it, I, I would have been shocked, shocked if they didn't. But let's assume they didn't realise it, just for a second. Let's assume that no one at NVIDIA actually caught this problem, which I personally believe they probably did. But let's assume no one understood this issue. Um, and, you know, then it was the review websites and eventually it got back to them. They should have just immediately just put their hands up and said, we're really sorry. It was a complete and utter screw up by ourselves. We're going to give you, and I've said this before a billion times, we're going to give you some coupons where you can get some money off some NVIDIA products. Um, I don't know what, you know, that value would be. It would obviously be country specific, but let's just say for the argument's sake, $50. And on top of that, we're going to give you um, free games and we're also going to offer you an upgrade solution if you so desire or you can get your money back or, you know, I'm, I'm just throwing out examples of what they could have done or um, you can, you know, have extra warranty on your product, you can have, you know, some free game updates, whatever the hell they, they came up with and it would have been a good will gesture, that's my point. And yes, they possibly would still be facing a lawsuit. They possibly would. But I think they would have better sympathy and they would at least have a bit of a leg to stand on from the PR standpoint. But right now, it feels like they're trying damage control and they're trying to kind of... 
basically this, it's almost the equivalent of like you're in the jungle right and you've got this massive wound on your leg like literally your legs half falling off and i come up to you and i give you like i know like i don't know half of a twig and i say okay we're going to use this twig to um you know prop your leg so you know when you walk out this little twig here is going to definitely act as you know a brace and support and on top of that i've got this little leaf we're going to use as a bandage you'd slap me in the face in other words it's not enough and that's kind of the problem here it's it's far too little far too late does this mean that you know the market is never going to forgive nvidia no but i think they will i think nvidia are probably going to learn from the mistake but at the same time, I think people are going to be a bit more due diligent. They're probably going to wait. And hopefully, there's going to be a bit more trepidation. And this is, as I've said a billion times before, this hopefully will act as a lesson to companies in the future. Just sell what you're going to sell. Or, at the very least, be better at communicating the specs. Be better at communicating the performance. And be better at fixing problems as soon as they arise. Because otherwise, consumers will learn. Your customers will learn. And when they do, they are not happy. But remember, this is like people will go ahead and they will get money back on like a $5 pair of headphones. If those $5 pair of headphones don't work as properly. For example, let's say that they're advertised, a stupid example. But let's say they're advertised in stereo. But in reality, all it's coming through is mono a lot of people will get their money back and they will be pissed but when you're talking like a 300 dollar card or 400 dollar card or whatever it you have to pay for it depending obviously on the brand and where you bought it and whether it's used and all of that stuff people are going to be angry that's the thing and when you consider as well that you're actually not only are paying a lot for it but you expect a certain x for that Anyway, I'm rambling on a little bit, but hopefully this is a lesson learned for all parties. But with that said, I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.